Hey, what's up, fellas? What I've got here is some waste oil burner equipment laid out, and I'm doing a job for Ashley in South Africa. They have two 30-ton bitumen tankers, I think they were called, and they need to heat these tankers with waste oil. I think they may be heating the fluid that they're transporting. I didn't get all the details, but it sounds like a pretty interesting project, and what I'm doing today is testing out some equipment that I want to uh, try with their job. Now, preheating waste oil is something that is not easily done. And what I mean by that is, yeah, you can rig up a system and throw a video together on YouTube in no time. And I've actually built a very successful preheated waste oil burner. I actually built this one here about 10 years ago. This is a very old video of mine. And this has a preheater vaporization coil inside the combustion chamber. And essentially what it does is it makes the best oil burner you've ever built for about 20 minutes. And then it fills up with so much varnish and crap that it's worthless. Like it's literally completely clogged up. And the copper tubing gets filled with varnish the same way a, a boiler for water gets clogged up with hard water deposits happens with oil. This thing made an amazing burner. Don't get me wrong but it just doesn't have a long lifespan. That's part of the problem. So because of that, I would never sell something like this because I know it's not gonna last long. You see here, I actually cut that coil open in a later video and examined it and showed how in fact that this process just, it isn't reliable. It, it runs for a small time, and then everything just clogs up. Efficiency drops off drastically. Okay, so I've thrown together a little bypass valve set up off of this bad boy. And this here is an accumulator. And man, is it working good. I'm, I'm amazed at how well it's working. You guys remember how much pulsation we had? That's our flow rate. Get a load of this. That's a pretty good smooth jet of fluid. And I don't feel as much of an undulation in there anymore either. So the accumulator's doing real nice. I probably should have let the Loctite dry a little longer. To reduce the flow rate of this pump, we take some of the discharge and loop it right back into the intake of the pump. So it's doing this continuous loop and what we do is we gate that flow with this valve here. This is the bypass valve, and this is the flow rate valve. By opening and closing this, we can increase the pressure and decrease the flow rate. But if you wanna decrease the flow rate and increase the pressure, you close both valves at the same time. Real nice steady flow of fuel. This is the heating element we're gonna be using. Um, in order to get it to start pumping, you have to disengage the bypass. Oh wow, that's pumping pretty quick. Ooh. You gotta immediately open it though. So an engine alternator is usually thrown about 13 to 14.2 volts. That pressure is way too high. Oh, there we go. We got some flow. Hey, that looks really nice too. Over there. So it looks like it's about 60 to, looks like about 70 to 80 kilowatts of flow rate right there. We're starting off at 71 degrees is our oil temperature and we want to be coming out of there at 200 degrees. So I'm going to suggest we start this thing off no less than 500 watts of power. Right, let's lower this big time. It's hot. Now we're getting some bubbling action in there and I don't like that. That's not good. That's going to mess up the burner. The burner ain't going to run right with them bubbles. We may have to get a bubble trap. Oh yeah, it's acting all kinds of weird. We're getting some localized overheating, I think, and some stratification. All right. 
Notice here we have steady flow. There's no entrained flow, no bubbles. That's kind of what you want in life, but I think this burner can handle it. So here we go. I'm gonna crank the power up. 500. Got 140 there. It's really going crazy on us. We're boiling. We don't want that. I think that flow is just a little high. I'm gonna have to adjust that. All right, guys, so wow, did that suck. Man, I really had to dig deep down inside of this thing and figure out what was going on and go through everything meticulously and come to find out is I had this thing set to Fahrenheit and on 50 hertz power. So if I ever run into this problem again, if you ever get your PID controller won't actuate the solid state relay, chances are that you have, I had it set to 50 hertz and on Fahrenheit mode. And I needed it to be set to 60 hertz Fahrenheit mode. All right, guys, so that battle's finally over. Let's try this one more time. We got a discharge temp of, it's showing 88 degrees. This in here is showing a little bit warmer, but there's some excess heat in there. Like a soldering iron over 500 watts there, all right? So, right around four to five PSI's there. We're getting some boiling. We're only hitting about 160 some degrees. Oh, don't do this to me. The damn PID's going crazy again. That should be shutting off on me here. Oh, crap. I'm only at 20 on here. Dang it, I couldn't see the decimal. Shut it down. Those bubbles cause interruption in fuel delivery, which is seen in a flame out in some cases. So that's why it's often detrimental to optimum operation. So I don't know how much I like what we're seeing here. A little bit of a tune there. Now we should see this thing just kick right off. Any second now. Oh man, this is too much. There it goes. So it allowed itself to go up 12 degrees. I got a slight adjustment to do there. Okay, we're coming up on 200. Yeah, we're gonna hit 200 even at 300 watts. And it's gonna shut that off on us. Oh, there it goes. It shut off at 210 this time. I guess what I wanna do now, just for the sake of knowing how to use this thing, is get this thing to trigger directly at 200 degrees, not 200. You seen how long that just overcooked? See if it kicks right back on at 200. Okay, so I think I know what's going on. It's gonna kick right back on at 200. I think I know why it did that. There it goes. It's now back on. There's gotta be a way to turn that off. I still don't want it to do that. Okay, I think I got it. I changed the hysterious from 10. This was set at default on 10 and you noticed that we triggered at um, 210 degrees. So just for the sake of getting this thing going quick, we're gonna just hit it with 500 and some watts. I'm gonna flash fry the soil here. And we're gonna to wanna to see this thing turn off directly at 200 degrees. Man, this is turning into a damn PID video quicker than I know what to do with. All right, man. I'm taking a break if this thing turns off at 200. That's a day's work right here. Bam, son! And you're done, it was a hysteria, man. That's good to know. This is officially a PID video.